All right, hello and welcome everyone. It is almost the end of the year, hooray! Uh, it's December the 16th, 2019. This is the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync. I am your host, Alan Shaw. Pleased to see you again. If you're here, then please put your name on the attendees list in the hackpad. It is linked from the chat here. And uh, if you are here and have some async updates that you'd like to share with people, then please do paste them at the bottom of the document. Uh, and th that will allow people to go through them uh, at their leisure uh, asynchronously. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know the deal. I say it every week. So uh, let's do this thing and uh, go through our uh, initiatives so we can update each other on what it is we're actually doing uh, this week. Okay. Um, so first up, there is upcoming or and or shipped releases and things. Oh, first of all, wait, before that, note taker. Jacob's already. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, I'm so bad at this. Thank you, Jacob. All right. Um, yeah, upcoming and shipped releases. Uh, we have, um, does anyone have anything to report here? I can say that there should maybe be, if we can get it out the door, a pre-release of the new JS IPFS release um, with the async await stuff, with the Unix FS 1.5 stuff uh, before Christmas. If we can do it, uh, we're gonna try, uh, but hopefully, hopefully. Oh. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> does anyone else have any anything else to share in upcoming or shipped releases? Or any questions? I know that there's already some fixed DHT bugs, but I don't think that that means that there's a, an imminent GoIPFS RC appearing. Someone on the GoIPFS team can probably state better. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think we're, we're quite there yet. I heard that TestGround had already identified many bugs. That's super cool. All right. Success. Part of a long progression of successes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then finally, there will be a Go IPFS release at some point soon. Uh, OK, in which case, let's move on to uh, upgrading, testing, and infra and process. Is uh, Jim, are you, are you on the call? Well, Steven's here now. Hey. Hi. Sorry, my network. I don't know what happened. Subsets, so subsets so don't. Uh, uh, yes, do we status update. Uh, well, we're currently working on it. The aim is to uh, launch it on Wednesday, or at least launch a version that people can use. It won't be feature complete, um, but it should hopefully be usable by everyone, um, or most of what we need to do. Uh, um, that's basically the status update. Uh, we're switching, we're having a few last minute changes. We're switching away from Docker Swarm to Kubernetes as the back end because Docker Swarm just doesn't support enough nodes for us. Uh, like we can sort of get it to run several hundred, but like we want at least a thousand and it falls over pretty quickly. Um, and yeah, we're just already have a bunch of kinks at the moment. And uh, Ellen, you asked me to run this meeting. If you'd like me to take over, I can. Sorry for being so late. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, sorry. Uh, so to make it way. Uh, not, not, not much uh, updates on this front. Uh, just uh, on the PR for Go ITFS, where there's uh, the PR to add subdomain, built-in subdomain support. I posted proposal to uh, like proposal to wrap three types of gateways into like human readable configuration options because we basically got like path based gateways, subdomain gateways, and also DNS link get gateway when you can point a domain at Go IPFS and it will act as a gateway for that specific hostname. So those are like three types of gateways and we sort of should make it much easier to for people to both host uh, not only like path gateway, subdomain gateway, for example, our partners at Infura would like appreciate to make it easier, but also like people who just want to host their own website. They don't want to uh, return bits of from anything else just to be safe. They just want to like hard code just this domain 
and they just want to put GoIQ first. So I was like thinking, how could we like come up with easy uh, configuration option? And I, I raised it here uh, mostly because it's what we agree in that PR would also need to be implemented in JSIPFS. So it's like good to have alignment on what we want to ship here. So people with opinion, go there. Steven, if you have time, what's your opinion? Thanks. Uh, I will uh, try right now. We're really trying to like launch test ground. So uh, I will take a look when I can. Yeah, sure. Um, Is there someone else who can take a look in the meantime? I, well, anyone can look. Um, I don't know if anyone else here has worked much with the gateways Hector here. Uh, I mean, Alan would probably have good feedback. Um, Alan, have a look. Sounds like you can assign three reviewers and whoever frees up will. Assign me as a reviewer and I might show up if I can. I will do my best. Okay. But I can't promise anything. Not this side of the year anyway. Uh, okay, uh, and distributed signaling, Jacob? Yeah, that's still on hold, but the lipid refactor is almost over, so we should be kicking that off again uh, early next year. Okay, excellent. Uh, IPNS, Vadim. Emerge the thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, the testing is, Testing on the live network is still not working because the DHT variations are too large to get like meaningful data. Um, we'll see how it goes or we'll write some test ground tests, but either way, uh, you end up saving a whole bunch of time. I sort of, turns out you also get bonus time because even if it takes just as long to use IPNS over PubSub as IPNS normally, you save, it, you save the bit swap trip because you're already connected to the node who has your data. So that's that's handy, and that's all IPNS things for I assume at least a, a little while. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. The next one is I think async data stores. Yeah, at performance. Yeah, blocked on review. Just sitting there, blocked on review. Uh, Dirk, could you take a look at it if you have time this week? Sure. Thank you. Um, Migration to multi-hash keys in block store, JSFFS, I assume that's still blocked on nice time. Still on hold, yes, all right. Uh, bit swap updates started, ah, yes. Dark. Uh, yeah, so the so there's sort of like a long running uh, PR against Go IPFS with, oh sorry, against uh, Go bit swap with some um, changes I've been making in a proof of concept there. So I'm porting those over to JavaScript land and uh, getting some very fast and useful reviews from Alan. So thank you for that. Um, so I'm just going to continue on that this week. In uh, terms of um, of communicating out the, the those changes in that work, um, is that is that on track for um, having having a draft blog post? By end of week or more finalized one? I'll check in and I'll make sure that's on track. Cool, thanks. Okay, we have a massive async await refactor update here. Yes. So we did a pre release last week of LibPDP. Uh, so that is out. Uh, started integrating that in BitSwap. That PR um, is good to go, just pending the LibPDP release. I uh, found a few annoying issues with LibPDP that needed fixed. So we fixed those, did another pre-release, um, but aside from that, the bit swap um, update went pretty easily. So, and I think that's like the most complicated thing that's using libp2p and IPFS. So the rest should be hopefully straightforward. Um, yeah, lots of example updates, lots of docs updates. We've been like revamping the docs a lot as part of this refactor. Um, Bashko has been putting in a lot of work on that. Um, looks good. So. It should be easier for people to find out how to use LibPDP in the future. Um, yeah, and then this week we're working on more docs, trying to get the release candidate out this week, and we're working on integrating with JSIPFS to find any other bugs or issues we should fix. That is it for LibPDP. Awesome. 
Nice. In, uh, in JSWFS land, I have opened all of the PRs I care to open on this quest. Uh, they are sitting there ready for, ready for review. There's one uh, big, there's two big ones actually, um, <clears throat> and many smaller, smaller ones. If you can have any time to help out and review those, um, the plan is to uh, get all of the little ones merged into the master PR um, and then get all of the tests and things all fixed up so that that can get, um, that can get merged. Uh, as I said before, we're aiming to pre-release pre before the end of the year. Um, I've written a migration guide so people moving to the new API uh, can uh, figure it out a lot easier. If you uh, would like to um, review or read that and uh, offer up your comments or tips or, uh, or changes, then um, that would be greatly appreciated as well. Um, that will go along in the release notes uh, for, for the release when it finally comes out. There is also a blog post in draft. It is not nearly ready. <laughs> uh, I did, I wrote about half of what I actually wanted to write and not even the core bit that I really wanted to mention, but it is, it is there and you're welcome to read it if you have time, but um, I am behind on that uh, just uh, so you know. Uh, but that's JSIBFS land, uh, async await refactor. Thank you to Jacob and the libp2p team for actually shipping the libp2p stuff. It's, that's amazing. And, and also for continuing to help me actually now integrate that into JSIPFS. It's really kind and, and very helpful. So thanks. Okay, I think that's all of the updates. We have one design proposal from Adin. Yeah, so we'd like to use, we'd like to be able to advertise multi-hashes instead of CIDs in the DHT. Uh, we can do this without breaking any API things in GlidePFS. Uh, the PR is there. It's been looked at by people. The only thing blocking it is like just making some decisions about, or a single decision uh, about how, what, what variety of keys we will allow people to store in the DHT. This is largely irrelevant because there are only two types of keys anyone is actually storing. Um, so we need to just make a decision so we can merge some code and let people use things. I think this is mostly blocked on uh, the PP team uh, and just like a sign that they're saying, yes, let's do this. Uh, I'll try to pin down rule and get a decision on it. Um, I don't, like, we could do a design review, I, but I don't know if there's going to be any objections. Yeah, I, I like, I don't care as long as one of the four options listed in the bottom of the document are selected. Okay. Was it actually, I guess we'll pull the room. Is anyone here interested in, okay, so the general proposal is currently we announce CIDs, but CIDs include things like the codec and the CID version. But really all we care about when we're trying to find content is like the actual data, that is like the block itself. So the proposal here is to switch to announcing multi-hashes instead of CIDs. This would not break anything for CIDv0 because it's the same thing. CIDv1 might have some breakage, but the DHT is already in such a state anyways that probably no one will notice. <laughs> Um, uh, and this will also mean that like, as we add data with both CID1 and CIDB0, uh, you'll still like the, the announcements in the DHT will be exactly the same. So everyone will be able to find the same thing. Uh, that's the whole point of this change. Um, uh, so yeah, the proposal is basically announce multi-hash instead of, or multi-hash instead of announce CIDs. Uh, a secondary part of this is also like on the server side to say, we don't actually care what you're announcing. As long as it's like less than 80 bytes, we'll just accept your announcements. Um, this way, like we can, change this in the future and basically you know, it's whatever we want, basically as any key match to a pure ID uh, for any kind of like routing. So if we decide to like make a different type of multi-hash, we or specifically like if we try to like add a multi-hash type, um, we don't have to like get the entire DHC to upgrade, stuff like that, um, if that second part made sense. Peter. Uh, yeah, is uh, 80 enough if we have a 64-bit hash with a variant prefix? Yes. Yeah, so 80 okay. bytes. Yeah, so uh, if I, I, I calculate that based on like okay. if you have 512 bits uh, and you want, yeah. So if you have 512 bits plus meta, extra metadata, I think it's, what is it? Um, no, that's good. Yeah. That, that's good. As long as you guys thought about this, that basically 80 is like way out there that we cannot cross it in any possible way. It's, it's, it's not way out there with quantum computers. 
Actually, no, I guess it would be way out there. Like it it, it yeah. is even, even with 512. I mean, even with quantum 512 is out there, I'm more concerned about 512 is good, but then we have all this extra padding that comes in and out because of... Yeah, other. so 512 is 64 bytes. Right. Uh, 80 would give us another 16 bytes. Uh, so that should be enough. Okay. Yes, yeah, sounds great. Other than that, we should, we should totally do it. Okay. Uh, well, so does anyone here actually want to, or raise your hand if you want to be a part of design meeting about this? Do you have anything to talk about? Or do I, should I just take it to the Lipidipi team? Okay, raise your hand if you think I should just take this to the Lipidipi team. Or if I didn't should. Okay. Uh, excellent. Okay, then we'll just take it to the Lipidipi team. So there's no need to actually call design meeting here. Okay. The one reason why it might be useful to have a meeting is to have a deadline by which this decision will be made, which then unblocks this work. Um, so I think regardless of whether or not an actual meeting is scheduled, setting a deadline here would be really yes. useful by which we yep. require action by the LibP team to unblock okay. this. Uh, I all have to talk to Ro about the deadline there. I don't know what, yeah. I'd like to say just like Wednesday, um, but yeah. Um, okay. But basically, like the FFS team has made has said, yes, let's do this. Um, yeah. Okay. Both both on the size and on no validation, as long as it's yeah. uh, validating. If if this is if a decision is made, when when would you foresee this being part of Go IPFS, the version of Go IPFS? Actually, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, it's though. a like next version. Um, so, uh, Alan, or sorry, Adina has already made the changes. Um, so. Uh, like the changes are in VR, so yes, next version. Yeah, okay, cool. Yes, Adin? Which version of the D of Kademlia, like what branch is going into the release? Is it master or stabilize? Uh, we will be merging master into stabilize and merging, like basically before the release, stabilize will become master and everything that's in master will become part of stabilize. That's a lot of merges. I. <laughs> Okay. It'll be fun, but we'll do it. So it may be manual merges. In some cases, we have to look at the patch and say, okay, what was sex trying to do and make them fit together, but that's, that's the way it's going to work. Okay, I think that covers that. Um, Blockers asks, please grade your OKRs. This is, I assume, for Molly. Uh, yes, please do it. Please do not follow my example on any of these. I will try to grade them as fast as I can, but uh, yeah. If you're seeing me not grading mine, that's not an excuse not to grade yours, uh, and then grade yours and they could bug me. Okay. Uh, parking lot. No, no questions. Okay. Parking lot. Uh, yeah. So GoFS has switched from slash IPFS multi adders to slash PDP multi adders. Um, uh, just beware. Uh, mostly this, like, so it still accepts like slash IPFS slash QM whatever as a multi adder, but now it, it um, will by default return slash PDP slash QM whatever. I believe JS IPFS also does this. Right? Yes. And it returns it by default? It, when we release next, it will be okay. the default, but it support, it's supported it for a long time. Has, okay. If Same we here. started using P2P addresses, do, does Go also support it yes. at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, it supports reading them. It just doesn't support, it just doesn't print them by default. Now it's such print. Okay, so we're, we're on track, uh, track to release at the same time. That's good. Uh, there are some PRs in progress for updating the documentation. Unfortunately, it turns out our documentation is not versioned along with our code which makes it a bit tricky. Um, but yeah, when we cut the release, we'll uh, update the documentation so we don't confuse users too much. Um, but a lot of people have been waiting, this for, are waiting for this for quite a while. Uh, shipped, uh, I see an update, uh, JS, IPSD, CTL. Does someone want to speak to this? Uh, that one was made by Hugo, but I've added it because it's cool. And okay. also a new release of IPS Companion, I've added it because I released it. <laughs> and okay. then uh, uh, well, links to release notes are there. Just something in case someone okay. missed it. Any really exciting changes you want to announce? Uh, now, when you add stuff to IPFS, it's in Web UI. Uh, if you add nice. files, if you add files with from IPFS Companion, you can see those files in Web UI. Which, uh, so are they added using MFS? Yeah, so we di by default, we import the directory in MFS. And if you like awesome. you got a picture on a page and you right click, you got a import IPFS and it adds to MFS. So it's like, oh, that's and so cool. 
it automatically copies, uh, and when you import, it automatically copies the link to a public gateway to that specific file. So you don't need to like right click anything. So it's a bit better for sharing, I guess. That is so yep. cool. OK. Anything else? No, nope. I think that covers everything then. Uh, please post uh, your I, async update. Oh, sorry, yes. I can speak too quickly to the IPFS DCTL, probably not to, uh, I probably won't do it justice, but it's allowing us in JS IPFS and the HTTP client to remove a whole bunch of boilerplate in, uh, in actually creating new nodes for I IPFS. The internals have been almost completely refactored. And so, and it's going to allow us to spawn nodes significantly quicker than we were before um, and and a whole bunch of other updates like it, it's streamlined the the options and the interface and the way it works uh, so it, it's just going to allow us to create tests and not only us um, but anyone else who's using the module are going to benefit from this and it's going to be a whole lot more stable um, because of it so um, it's uh, really good work and Hugo has been working on it for ages so just kudos to him for for that can we just unmute and do like a, yeah, a, one of those loud, loud applauses for all of the things, all of Hugo's work, Lytle's new launch, basic away. Holy shit, guys. Are you going to make us sing as well? Right. <laughs> uh, I no. don't know. Someone no. have a good, congratulations. <laughs> what would we sing? Hold on, it's the end of the year. We are the champions, my friends. <laughs> Not as good as that. Okay. I think that's it for this meeting. See y'all. Uh, I guess probably see some of you next week. Actually, Billy. This is the last meeting until 2020. Yeah. Everyone have wonderful, wonderful winter holidays. Hopefully we'll still see many of your faces um, in, in other meetings this week, but um, have, have a wonderful break and see you all in January too. See y'all. Bye. 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 Happy holidays.